Hey everybody, welcome to the next 12-Step Buddhist Podcast. My name is Darren Littlejohn, author of a forthcoming book by A Tree Beyond Words Publishing, The 12-Step Buddhist, available now for pre-order at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and soon to be at a bookstore near you. It says here that it should be noted that the Dhamma, which is the object of the application of mindfulness as described above, could be complicated and difficult for those who have never studied Buddhist science. As a matter of fact, this mindfulness of Dhamma is more suitable for those who have real understanding and deep knowledge of Buddhist science, or who possess a high level of logical and wise thinking. Well, I've never met an addict who wouldn't think that that applies to them. A high level of logical and wise thinking. It's... Sounds like dangerous medicine for addicts. But it's not, if we're paying attention. Let's meditate for just a few moments on our condition as addicts. This podcast is for anybody who's addicted to anything, whether or not you're in a 12-step program. It's for Buddhists. And anybody who knows anybody who's addicted to anything, and anybody who knows a Buddhist. Just listening, the listen to the sound of the bell as an example. But sound as any phenomenon, be it physical or formless, comes from vast state of emptiness. And to emptiness it will fade. Let's listen to the bell again with that in mind. Can you watch your thoughts go like that? your mind an ocean, as Lama Yeshi used to say. I wasn't around, but so I've heard. I had a young lady in the uh, adolescent treatment center the other day after one of our meditation classes ask me if the bell really ever stops ringing. If you think you have the answer to that question, why don't you visit me at the12stepbuddhist.com. You can hit the Ask button up at the top to send in your comment or question or answer. Or you can go to simply ask.the12stepbuddhist.com. T-H-E-1-2-step-buddhist.com. You can also get there if you spell out the letters, but everything's really living at the12stepbuddhist.com after the book. So it's interesting that this woman handed me this tonight. She came into our meditation group this evening and she said, here, you said you like books. So she handed me this. It's called An Introduction to Buddhist Meditation for Results. So it's obviously not a Zen book. And there's a list of about six people on here as the authors. I can't read it because my light is too low, so I'm going to get that to you in a moment. So what do you guys think of this idea of Buddhist science 
suitable for those who have a real understanding and deep knowledge or who possess a high level of logical and wise thinking. You know, I guess it's an alternative, isn't it? It's one or the other. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be super intellectual. Matter of fact, as we say in the 12-step programs, that could be a detriment. If only I were stupid enough to simply follow the directions they gave me, we'd probably be a lot better off. And those of us who think we know something often find out how wrong we are. So that's an interesting topic. You have to be smart to understand. Certainly if you call it Buddhist science, it sounds like you have to be smart to understand it. But what is real understanding and what is deep knowledge? Ah, now that is a different question. So let's just leave that for the moment and let me thank Clay Guyberson. You can go to Clay Guyberson, that's G-I-B-E-R-S-O-N dot com. Clay is an amazing jazz pianist here in the Portland, Oregon area. And he uh, was kind enough to get on his, uh, what are those called, Nords? Moogs? They're all, oh, the Moogs are the old ones, but anyways, he's got a whole stash of electronica, electronic gear, but is an amazing pianist, on a, just right on a Steinway, you know, by himself. Uh, he can do it like Bill Evans and, you know, not too many people I'd say that about. So thank you, Clay, so much for creating that beautiful intro for the 12-Step Buddhist Podcast. So what is the 12-Step Buddhist Podcast? I alluded to it, and this is just the introductory kind of uh, here we are and here's what we're going to do kind of episode. I'm a little nervous. It's my first podcast since um, a couple of years ago. I did about 30 some episodes of the Portland Jazz Jams Pod Show for a nonprofit startup kind of deal I did here in the Portland area for jazz musicians. But that's another story and it's over now. What we're going to do on this podcast is talk about the 12 steps talk about the condition of the addict whose mind, as it says in the 12-step literature, is the source of the problem. The main problem of the alcoholic, says the AA Big Book, centers in his mind rather than in his body. And we're going to talk about Buddhism. That's not an either or, I'm afraid, to disappoint you if you're looking for an alternative to the 12 steps. Although, if you'd like to try, please feel free. Um, I've tried and it cost me dearly. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna discuss things like that and I'm gonna have some guided meditations, uh, tips and tricks for how to get by without needing to get over. And you know, what does it mean to practice as a 12-step Buddhist? You know what it is and what it isn't, and how to integrate. I, I got an email tonight. It's interesting. Um, the Twelve Step Sangha website. Twelve Step Sangha is a uh, meditation group for recovering people that I started here in Portland, and uh, have a little website. You can find it. Twelve Step Sangha dot com. S a n g h a. You can download the format and start one of these meetings in your living room or neighborhood, church, basement, wherever. But I got an email on this uh, website because I sent out some announcements for some Buddhist events going on here in Portland. And the guy said some, something like, well, I think it's really unwise to try to integrate any two practices. Well, that's just wrong. We can integrate completely. Didn't say it was easy. It's taken me over 20, 1984, what is it, 2008, I don't know, a long time now to uh, figure it out. It's been working on it for a long time. So I'm not saying it's easy, but it can be done. And 
for me, it was absolutely necessary to do it. Work both programs, work them together, work them in and out, work one in the other, and so on and so forth. So, yes, you can. If you read the book, The 12-Step Buddhist, I show you how. And uh, what are spiritual principles? We're going to talk about what's a principle and how to, how to work with a principle, how to apply it. I will share with you uh, from time to time, maybe not every time, I might keep it fresh and change it up a little bit here and there, but I'd like to be able to share uh, interesting books, uh, excerpts, websites, teachings, retreats, webcasts, whatever I may have found useful in the recent time period leading up to that particular episode of the 12 Step Buddhist Podcast. And I'm going to talk about the website because it is really cool. There's a lot of new, fantastic stuff out there. A lot of tools. Um, I came up learning HTML um, in around 96 or so and doing things in tables and trying to make them work for different browsers and all this. So now we've got CSS and PHP and WordPress and MySQL and Web 2.0. So I've been learning about all those things as I'm building my website again, building another one from the ground up. And I think it looks pretty cool. You should check it out. www.the12stepbuddhist.com And you don't need a www anymore. I don't think anybody needs that. I mentioned Ask the 12-Step Buddhist. If you'd like your questions, comments, situations, diatribes, etc. addressed on this podcast or perhaps in a blog article, feel free to submit those. Now, I've got one here. And you'll just bear with me for a moment while I find it. I'll be right back. Alrighty, so this is from Samantha in Minneapolis. It says, I've been recovering for a couple of years now, and I have a few friends and mentors who practice Buddhism. I'm quite intrigued. So my question is, how do I start to practice this way of living, and how can I get more information on it? I live in Minneapolis, and I was wondering if there are anyone to contact near me, thanks. So, that is the question. How do I get started and how do I start to practice this way of life? It really is a way of life, uh, Samantha. That's most definitely um, something that I've noticed. And it's a different, it's a different attitude. It's a different perspective being in spiritual on the spiritual path as a recovering addict. So you might not find that the uh, typical Buddhist practitioner or teacher understands the condition. And you may most likely will find that your typical 12-step group mentality is a little bit and some people are open, but there's a lot of uh, kind of a Western emphasis on the whole on the whole idea of spirituality. So the first thing you, that you should do is make sure that you're firmly grounded in your 12-step program. Don't look at this as an alternative. Look at it as a deepening, as an enhancement of your program and you know have your home group have your sponsor your steps your sponsee your coffee maker position whatever you do for service go go regular regularly and be cheerful about it and find a meditation group if you can find a spiritual teacher that you can really trust and that may take some time and they're not all worth trusting. I'm going to say probably most aren't. I don't know. 
but the thing is that you'll know. And I think if we as addicts have a grounding in the 12 steps and have worked the 12 steps, our um, bullshit o meter is uh, pretty finely tuned. You know, most of us have baggage and childhoods and you know, memories, and we know when somebody's trying to uh, steer us down the down the wrong path if we're paying attention. If we're not in a program and we're full of wishful thinking or self-will or you know other emotional problems that may be going on, it's uh, probably not as easy to understand who's a good person to hang out with and who's not. So that's why they say come in, stick with the winners, get in the program, stay in the program. Same thing applies to finding a spiritual teacher. So I would just go, you know, F, is it F, Scott Peck at any rate said uh, in um, The Road Less Traveled, I think that, you know, you, you have to be a good consumer uh, looking for a psychologist, I think is what he was talking about. But I think you have to be a good consumer when you're talking about an even better consumer, really sharper uh, when you're talking about spiritual teachers. Not everybody does it the same way. There are a lot of traditions, and the ones that I practice in, the Zen tradition, the various branches of Tibetan Buddhism, there are there's quite a variety of uh, approaches, and there's a lot to learn, and more than we can cover in a few minutes here on the podcast. But hey, that's why I wrote the book. You know, you can pre-order it now at the Twelve Step Buddhist dot com. You can go to Amazon. Barnes and Noble, get your copy for ten bucks while they are on pre-order. Because if that price goes up, you know you're still locked into the good price. So it'll be out next year, but you can order it now. In the meantime, listen to this podcast. Check the blog at the Twelve Step Buddhist.com. I've just written an excellent article. I think it's excellent. It was a fantastic experience. The article is entitled Getting Naked with the Guru. That's about finding a spiritual teacher and what it's like, what it was like, what it's like now. And a recent retreat experience that I had and how it was to be an addict in that experience and to try to scramble to find some other recovering people and get on the same page with them. So I think you'll find that useful indication of at least the way that I approach it and you know definitely you know if you're going to meetings and you're doing your thing and you are involved in a sangha of some kind and you're really into it you know that's going to work out for you you're going to figure out what what's working if it's not working it's okay to move on really but you know as addicts we want to you know immediate fix and if you know people aren't going to resent that well I don't know judge them and go, you know, oh, give it a shot, give it a fair, honest effort. But, you know, trust your gut, as they used to say in the programs, you know, trust your gut when you go in. If it ain't right, it ain't right. And get out, move on. Um, one, one good indication is to look at the qualities of the students. Are there people who are calm and that you like? You know, the group that we had over here tonight, um, it's a Lama Suryadas group. I mean, these people are really nice. I've been hanging out with them for a couple of years. They're not super intense. They're not mean. They don't bicker. You know, they're very pleasant. And uh, it's one kind of group. You know, other groups have different dynamics. Not so easy all the time. So sometimes, uh, sometimes the problems, you know, help us look at ourselves more deeply. It's certainly been the case in my ongoing struggles with particularly with my Zen affiliation as I write about in the book you know you'll see how I what I went through and and you know where I've come to with it and you know I'm, I'm there and I'm doing it and it's fine you know but it's not always that it's not always uh, what it looks like it is it's not always on the surface you know what's really going on requires some some looking and some examination and there's no better tool than the 12 steps and to help me understand where I fit into the Buddhist community and uh, vice versa, you know. 
So I hope that answers your question. And if you read the book and you stay on top of the blog and you listen to the podcast, I think you'll really have a lot to go on. I go into a lot of depth in the book at each step. So that should work out well for everyone, I hope. I, I really put my heart into it. So I'm sure you'll like it. Find something in there. But in the meantime, you know, get started. Get the, get the base, you know, get your practice going read some books and maybe do some personal retreats and go on some retreats buy buddha dharma magazine and find something go there do it check it out right now the dalai lama is in madison wisconsin i'm getting emails from friends who are there and i wish i was there and maybe you can go to something like that and discover for yourself how to begin on the path Okay, so I've mentioned the website. Uh, there is a cool rating system. You can interact. Take a look at it. Tell me what you think about how it's organized and what you might like to see or what you don't like. Whatever, let me know. I want to interact with you. I want the user experience there on the website to be something that works for a lot of people. So make your comments. Go to ask.the12stepbuddhist.com or send email to me. Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, at the12stepbuddhist.com. That's the number 12, stepbuddhist.com. All right, people. I've had a long day, so I'm going to move on. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed the podcast and that you're as excited about this upcoming movement as I am and that you want to be a part of it as badly as, as I've worked to become a part of it and... I think, um, think we're on the right track, so stay clean and sober, get on the cushion, rock it up, and we'll talk soon.